Blog Talk Radio. Hello, everyone, and welcome to my show. I'm your host, Diana Bavarosa, award-winning and best-selling author, Fire and Ice, The Journey of Transformation, The Wide Within. You can find out more about me on my website, dianabavaros.com, as well as download today's podcast and my past podcasts. They're available on Blog Talk Radio slash Diana Bavaros and on iTunes. You can... Um, you can write, uh, type my name in the search engine and you can um, comment and, of course, you can also um, tell me what kind of a topic you wish me to cover and I'll be more than happy to do it for you. Um, I have been a, a radio talk show host for the past six years. I have been doing a lot of humanitarian work and I continue to do it. And... Um, of course, uh, I work on domestic violence, prevention of domestic violence uh, for the past 13 years. And today, this is something I want to cover after observing so many um, tragical events uh, from uh, groups on Facebook, uh, being part of the groups and um, seeing what is going on. And uh, today, uh, I want to cover... Uh, COVID-19 pandemic, lockdown, how many people, how many women have died, children, and uh, what is uh, the statistics based on it. And I'm going to read some articles, and of course, I'm going to comment just a little bit from my own experience. And um, please don't forget to sub- subscribe on my channel on Block Talk Radio as well as comment. This is really important. And if you are going through a difficult time or um, if you need some kind of a help, uh, just reach to me. And again, the website is com. So today I'm going to read articles uh, from uh, this article, especially is from uh, Council Foreign Relationships. And it's uh, titled, A Double Pandemic Domestic Violence in Age of COVID-19. Government worldwide have imposed lockdowns to contain the coronavirus, but those same restrictions have increased the risk associated with domestic violence, especially for women, children, and LGBTQ plus individuals. Around the globe, Governments have implored residents to stay home to protect themselves and others from the new coronavirus disease, COVID-19. But for domestic violence victims, the vast majority of whom are women, children, and GBTQ individuals, home is a dangerous place. How have lockdowns influenced rates of domestic violence? Data from many regions already suggested significant increase in the domestic violence cases particularly among marginalized populations. Take, for example, the Middle East and North Africa, which had the words U.S. laws protecting women from domestic violence, an analysis of U.N. women of the gender impacts of COVID-19 in the Palestine terrorized territories found an increase in gender-based violence and warned that the pandemic will likely disproportionately affect women, exhibit pre-existing gender at risks and vulnerabilities and widen inequalities in Latin, Latin American countries such as Mexico and Brazil. A spike in calls for hotlines in the past two months suggested an increase in domestic abuse. Meanwhile, a drop in formal complaints in countries such as Chile and Bolivia is likely due to movement restrictions and the inability to our hesitance of women to seek help or report through official channels, according to United Nations and local prosecutors. In China, police officers in the city of Jingzhou received three times as many domestic violence calls this past February as in the same time in 2019. Some high- and middle-income countries, such as Australia, France, Germany, South Africa, and the United States have also reported significant increase in reports of domestic violence since the COVID-19 outbreak. 
It is important to remember that domestic violence was a global pandemic long before the COVID-19 outbreak. According to data collected by the United Nations, 243 million women and girls between the ages of 15 and 49 worldwide were subjected to sexual or physical violence by an intimate partner in the last 12 months. Put a different way, one in three women has experienced physical or sexual violence at some point in their life. LGBTQ plus individuals experience similarly high levels of violence. Today, rising numbers of sick people, growing unemployment, increased anxiety and financial stress, and scarcity of community resources have set the stage for an exacerbated domestic violence crisis. Many victims find themselves isolated in violent homes with actual resources or friends and family networks. Abusers could experience hate and financial pressures and stress, increase their consumption of alcohol or drugs, and purchase of hoard guns as an emergency measure. Experts characterized an invisible pandemic of domestic violence during the COVID-19 crisis as a ticking time bomb or a perfect storm. What has been the impact on social service for domestic violence victims? Cities around the world have seen a dramatic increase in the demand for social services and assistance, especially from people in vulnerable conditions who may not legally qualify for social welfare. Meanwhile, social health and legal service providers such as shelters, food banks, legal aid offices, child care centers, health care facilities, and rape crisis centers are overwhelmed and understaffed some shelters are full, others have been converted into health facilities. Our prisons have become hot, hotbeds for the spread of COVID-19. Some criminal justice authorities are halting arrest and releasing inmates. These are critical, important public health measures that should be accompanied by alternative means to prevent and interrupt domestic violence such as individualized risk assessments, efforts to notify victims of pending inmate releases, and safety planning support for victims, unless governments provide sufficient guidance, resources, and training to local authorities, people will continue to be at the greatest risk of domestic violence. What can countries do to protect those at risk of domestic violence amid the pandemic? As the Inter-American Commission of Human Rights and the United Nations have emphasized countries must incorporate a gender perspective in their response to COVID-19 crisis, several countries and non-governmental organizations have already taken innovative steps in the direction. New campaigns also use social media to spread awareness of resources available to survivors, including hotlines, text messages, based reporting, and mobile applications. Social distancing has increased people's reliance on technology and changed the many, the way mental health, legal, and other social services are provided to survivors. Unable to leave their homes with the disruptions to the criminal justice, countries have shifted to virtual court hearings, facilita- facilitated online methods for obtaining protection orders and communicate their intentions to continue to provide legal protection protection to survivors. Moving forward, it's critical that states support the development of alternative reporting mechanisms, expand shelter options, strengthen the capacity of the security and justice sectors, maintain vital sexual and reproductive health services, where domestic and sexual violence victims are often identified and supported, support independent women's groups, finance economic security, measures for women workers, especially those serving on front lines of the pandemic or in the informal economy, and other groups disproportionately affected by the pandemic, such as migrant, refugee, homeless, and trans women, and collect comprehensive data on the gender impact of COVID-19. How is the pandemic likely to affect long-term progress toward ending domestic violence?
elected officials and the general public are now more aware of the invisible pandemic than before and the connection between physical insecurity and economic insecurity is certainly more tangible for people who might otherwise have been less attuned to domestic violence. There is now a unique opportunity to shine light on the economic dimensions of domestic and gender-based violence, create financial safety, wealth for victims, and consider public health-oriented non-carceral approaches that addresses prevention and root causes. At the same time, this pandemic has the potential to continue to marginalize domestic violence survivors in dire need of support amid what could become the greatest global economic crisis in modern history. For survivors particularly, those who are marginalized or underdeserved, the pandemic could reinforce their mistrust in formal system and alienate the further alienate them further, repairing those relationships would be an enormous challenge that would require an overhaul of conventional approaches to prevention, response, and treatment. Governments, NGOs, and the private sector need to incorporate a human rights and gender lens into all of the COVID-19 responses and funding structures to address this new reality. So, as you see, there's so many, so much work needs to be done for uh, the prevention of domestic violence. We need to uh, work together as a team and make sure that domestic violence is um, behind us. And we, this is not something that ha- has happened right now uh, during the COVID-19 pandemic. It has been going on for quite a while. And it looks like we need a really good system uh, that can be... Um, uh, available in uh, domestic violence cases and um, especially when it comes to counseling, which I feel it's really important and to determine if this uh, relationship has a future and sometimes it could fix the problem they're facing and uh, it could uh, make a difference. And uh, I feel that uh, these families which reach for help need to find help right away. And for everybody who's going to listen to this and who is going through domestic violence, uh, this is for the both partners. Please find the best way to deal with uh, all the kinds of uh, problems you're facing. And you need to understand that it's not only you. It's the whole world is facing financial problems, is facing uh, stress, is facing anxiety, is facing all, uh, unemployment, all kinds of all of these um, obstacles that need to be handled in the best possible way, with understanding, with uh, in, uh, the fact that you actually don't have control over it, and it's not your fault. This is the best thing, and you don't have to take it to your, uh, to your partner. Uh, and uh, nobody is, um, uh, it's not body's fault because of what's happening and things as you see happen in life and you don't have control over it. And uh, if you feel like you need to separate from each other, please do so. Find the best possible solution to the problem. And uh, again, you are not alone. So many people are facing this and are being violent and doing uh, um, on uh um, doing things which are not gonna benefit anybody, and uh, it's not gonna it's not gonna make a difference. So if you need help, please reach to me. I have been coaching a lot of people. Please reach to me. My website is dianabewaros.com. I can even find you wherever you are in the world. Um, sources where you'll be able to uh, use it in your advantage. Advantage and. Um, Find help. Find help. It's really important. And get out if you're a domestic violence relationship and feel like your life is in danger and your children's life is in danger. Think about it. Uh, And do uh, everything in your power to make sure you're safe because safety is number one. Safety for you, for your children, even for the partner at home. And uh, again, if you need help and if you want me to point out sources all over the world, I can send you a link. I can send you a phone number where you can count and get the kind of help you need. 
don't wait for the tragic events to happen and nobody's winner at the end. So I wish you an amazing weekend. I hope this is going to help you and I'm working on my new book right now and uh, it's going to be available to the end of 2019. And uh, Please register, uh, subscribe to on my website, download my free gift, and uh, friend me on Facebook, uh, LinkedIn, everywhere. I'm everywhere on Instagram, and uh, learn about what else I'm um, doing about domestic violence and all the other things I have been doing for a while. So I wish you an amazing weekend. Uh, please be reasonable. Please be. Please do everything in your power to make yourself safe and make yourself sane at the same time and uh, I'll be um, again live on next Friday 12.30 Pacific time please subscribe on my website uh, on my website and download all of my podcasts for free <laughs>